Now that we have all the parts made, we need to assemble it. So we have our base here, and the jaw slides inside the base, and then we have the screw and the handle to make that all work. And then remember, the jaw has the two keys sitting inside of it as well. And that makes it a little bit more difficult to assemble. Um, and we have to do it a certain step to make sure we actually remember to do that. So I'm an inventor, and I'm going to create a new assembly. And let's go ahead and place the first part, which is going to be the part that doesn't move, and so it should be the base. I'll just right-click, click OK to only have one, and then let's right-click on that and ground it so it no longer moves. Now let's go ahead and place the jaw. No, I want one of them. And now I'm going to go and place the keys right away. And we're going to do the key as our first constraints. So there's two keys on the part, one for both sides. So I'm going to place two. Now, these keys slide in these slots here that we made. And they stick out a little bit to kind of keep the jaw sliding properly inside of this. So to do that, I'm going to go to Constraint. And I'm going to select the top of the jaw, or the top of the key, and then the top face of one of those slots. Now, it's OK that's going the wrong way. So now I'm going to select this um, back side of it and select the back side of that um, cutout. And there's my jaw so far. So now it slides in there, but we need to make it so it just stops right at the front of it. So to do that, I'm going to use a flush constraint to go from the face of the jaw to the face of the key. And there it is. Now let's go do that quickly to our side. And there's the jaw with all the keys. All right, now I can put this jaw in the base so that it slides back and forth. So to do that, I'm going to constrain the top of the jaw or top of the base to the bottom surface here of the jaw. And then that keeps it on that same plane. So if I look straight at it, I can't go up and down with it. But we do need to spin it around. So to do that, this center point will line up with this center point. So we can just click on those to make that happen. But we see it went the wrong way. So I'm going to undo. And I'm actually going to undo a few times. And I'm going to actually first constrain this side of it. So I'm going to use a flush constraint and go from the outside of the base to the outside of the jaw. And now we're in the right order. And apparently I didn't delete that uh, mate constraint between these two surfaces. So then this just slides in there perfectly then. So the next part is to put the screw in there. So let's go place our screw. And this screw's center line corresponds to the center line of that circle. And then it's inserted into the jaw here. So I'm going to go to insert and select this back circle and select this front circle here and then switch my type of solution here to align to have it stick in there perfectly. Right, last parts we got to place are the handle rod and the knobs. So let's place that handle rod and then I'm going to go back to place right away and just place my two handle knobs. Let's put the handle knobs onto the rod first. These are a circular part going onto a circular thing, so let's use the insert constraint to do that. 
And to do this properly, I need to look kind of down the, the hole of the handle knob and get back there to that back circle. Let's do it to the other one then. And there's our handle knob then. And rod. Lastly, this just kind of free floats inside of this. So I'm going to go back to constraint by clicking C on my keyboard. Click on the center line. Click on the center line. And there we go. That slides in there. And that's it assembled. It's a fairly simple assembly. Though there's a couple of issues with it that we're going to have to address in the next video. So let's check our mass though, make sure we're correct so far. We're 17.396 pounds. And let's go ahead then and save it.